But those are the best numbers in the history of the border. And then look, it was like an Elon Musk rocket ship went up. <laughs> they announced they were going to open the borders. I thought they were kidding. I built 200 miles of, of rail. And this is what Border Patrol wanted. I wanted to have concrete plank, like in a parking lot, straight up and down the air, but you wouldn't get vision. And concrete is not as strong in terms as, as steel. They have very strong specifications. They wanted to have steel, hardened steel, very hard to cut. Then they wanted to have very powerful, high number concrete. It's a very hard concrete. And then they wanted to have rebar at the highest level of steel strength in the middle. Because it's very hard to cut. It's like it can be done if you're really good, but it's very hard. And then they wanted to have a anti-climb panel on top. I hate it. I hate the anti-climb. I said, I don't like it. It's so beautiful without that damn panel. I said, don't make me do that, sir. It's an anti-climb panel, and it's called that for a reason. And we actually had testers. We had guys, two guys that climbed Mount Everest. I said they should qualify. <laughs> but you know who the best, you know who the best were? We had drug runners. These guys are unbelievable. They went up that thing like it was nothing. Like I never, with 75 pounds of drugs on their back, drug runners. They were beating the Mount Everest. Well, it's a different profession after all. But they were right. That anti-climb panel stops them cold. They couldn't get over the anti-climb. So I said, let's do it. Let's do it. But we built 200 miles of additional. And all they had to do was put it up. The hard work was done. They were built. It was delivered. And the hard work was done. Highest specification cost more money than what I would have done, but uh, what I would have done, they have acids that actually melt concrete. They have certain acids that you put down. Those planks would have come down very easy. These guys are ingenious. You know, if they would spend their brains on, on good, everything in the world would be nice. No, they're genius, the way they smuggle drugs into our country. You got to see the cars. They build cavities in engines. So you're inspecting a car. They have them in hubcaps. But even if you take the hubcap, you can't find them. It's like a double hubcap. It's the craziest thing. If they would spend that genius on doing good for their country or for us, I mean, we would have no problem. I mean, it's, it's really incredible. And, you know, the, uh, the people that do the trafficking, what they do with the women is um, they put them in trunks of cars. It's mostly women, by the way. Mostly women. A lot of people say traveling and trafficking. But the trafficking is women. And the reason is it's become as big as the drugs. And the reason is because of the internet. The internet made it a modern business and a big business. And I'll tell you, some of these guys are among the richest people in the world. And they run a real operation. And they essentially take care of Kabbalah because they even have an app where they can call. So they learn where they, where they can drop people that they're putting into the country, where they can come through with drugs. They have an app. Can you believe you call an app? You're now a drug trafficker or a human trafficker, and you say, ding, 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 hello? Where do I drop these people? Go about seven miles up, and then go a mile left, and just drop them at the opening in the gate. Okay, thank you. Can, can you believe this? This is Kamala. So all that stuff ends very quickly. We'll get that thing built. But they could, have, they could have put up 200 miles. Oh, you know what they did with that expensive stuff? And it's expensive. They had it laying in the sand, laying in the mud. It was all there to be put up. All they had to do is flip it up. It, takes, it goes like they put it up real fast. Three weeks. The whole thing, we would have had 750 miles of wall. Think of it. And boy, walls work. Walls work and wheels work. You know, they never get obsolete, right? The computers in about two minutes are obsolete. And, uh, but we have the best computer guy there is, right? We have Elon. And he loves it. And you know where Elon is right now? Elon is right now. He's in Pennsylvania campaigning because he thinks, he thinks it's the single most important thing he's ever worked on. Elon Musk, and we want to thank him. He's an amazing guy. When I saw that rocket came down, 
When I saw that sucker come down, 22 stories, by the way, you know, people think it's like uh, five feet high, it's 22 stories. That sucker's coming down, and it's, uh, those engines were blowing, it all computers, it's all computers, you know, it's true. That thing, I said, oh man, it's gonna crash. No, don't, it's going right into the gantry, right? it's gonna crash. And then the engines, the fire starts blowing, the bottom left, the whole bottom left is blowing, and it's just pushed it up. And then it came down, and those two big arms, you saw the arms? They grabbed that thing like you grab your beautiful baby. See, I thought much better. Years ago, I would have said something else, but I've learned. You have, you have to learn. I would have been a little bit more risque. Like you grab your child, you grab your child, and I put it in place, and I called Elon, I said, was that you? Yes. He said, that's genius. He said, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was a lot, of, a lot of brain power went into that. I said, why do you do that? He said, well, we don't want to drop a ship in the ocean every time it goes, and you have to start all of those things cost billions of dollars. He said, this way we save them. I said, can Russia do that? No. Will they be able to? No, not for a long time. What about China? No. You know, we opened up Space Command. We did the whole thing. We, if we didn't do that, we'd be way, way behind. Space Force. You know, Space Force. They got one of the many things. We did so many things with the tax cuts, the regulation cuts, the uh, right to try for those people that are terminally ill. You get the right to try our medicines here instead of going to Asia and Europe. Or if you have no money going home, which is about... 99% have no money and they go home. But the few people that have the kind of money you need for that, that go to Europe, that go to Asia, and we have the best labs in the world, and nobody ever talks about it. They tried to get it for 50 years. I got it done, passed through Congress. You think anything's easy to get passed through those guys? It's not easy. But we did so many things, and, and we've saved thousands and thousands of lives. It's worked out unbelievably. And, you know, nobody wanted it. The uh, scientists didn't want it because they're terminally ill. They don't want to start from a terminally ill person. Looks bad on the records. They didn't want record sheets. The insurance companies hated it. It was very, very, I got everybody into a room. Our country hated it because our country will get sued. When somebody's terminally ill, they die and they sue the country. I said, you can't do that. I got everybody in the room and I signed an agreement. I had it. everybody agreed that we're going to work beautifully with people that are terminally ill, but they're not going to be allowed to sue anybody. If they die, they die. And if they live, it's going to be the greatest. We have saved thousands of people. And nobody ever talks about it. You know, nobody ever talks about thousands and thousands. I mean, we have a person in this room who was saved by right to try. We're a... Uh, you know, a space age drug, right? th doing things, but it takes a long time to get them approved, or they cut it in half. I cut that time in half, but the FDA takes 12 years sometimes to get something. And uh, by the time it's approved, a lot of people are gone. So when they're terminally ill, we get them that drug right away. They sign, they sign an agreement that I or my family will not ever for any reason and under any circumstance, sue the United States government, such and such a drug maker, such and such a lab, Dr. Schwartz, Dr. Jones. We will not sue anybody. We just want to get better. That's all it says. Pretty good, right? That's pretty good for a semi, for only a semi non lawyer. But that's essentially what it says. And you know, the funny thing is the ones that were most against it were the drug companies and the labs. The lab to, oh, we have the greatest labs in the world. What we're doing, space age things, are, we, and we got it started. It was, it was dying on the limb before I came along. Well, NASA was dead. When I came along, all you're seeing with the space, and NASA was dead. NASA had grass growing out of its, uh, out of its runways. It, the runway, I mean, they had, every time there was a crack, you had grass. Uh, this uh, place was dead. Now it's the vo most vibrant center anywhere in the world, uh, all of their centers, it's vibrant, and Elon brought it back, uh, and, and the people at NASA are doing a great job. They're all working together. They're all working together, but we brought it back. It and ultimately, we were, you know, we want to go to Mars and all, but what I want it for is defense. And Russia and China were killing us in space, and space is so important. It's going to end up being maybe, I don't want to say more important than the Marines, because they'll never speak to me again, but I'll tell you what, 
it is going to be right up there in terms of importance. It's important. If we didn't have it, we were being lapped by China. They have stuff up there. And uh, Russia, even though they're a little bit busy uh, killing a lot of people, a war that would have never taken place. Zero chance. I'd speak to Vladimir Putin a lot. It was the apple of his eye. Don't do it. Don't do it. I mean, I closed up his pipeline. It was dead. Nord Stream 2. Biden came in and he allowed it to go. But he closed up the Keystone XL pipeline. Our pipeline. Think of that. I said, no, Joe, you got it wrong. You let Keystone go forward and you close up the Russian pipeline. But he did, he did the opposite. And then they said, oh, Trump loves Russia. Trump loves Russia. <laughs> It's the biggest project they've ever had. I close it up. Then he came in. The first day he was there, he let him build it. So what is that? Oh, that sounds so cute. I love dogs. I love dogs. We love dogs. You know, Lara Trump, by the way, you happen to know she, she's married to my son, and she's the... Vice Chairman, along with Michael, they're, they're doing an incredible job. But she, uh, she would come into the office, and she loves dogs and pets. And she would get me to do things for doggies that you wouldn't believe. Dad, we have to make the cages larger. We have to provide air conditioning. Can you believe? I didn't know too much about it, but you understand what I'm saying in these kennels where they're Obviously not treated too good. I said, so uh, do we have to give him a steam bath? Or do I? These, no, she was very, very strong. And I did all of I listened to her when she talks. I listen. But uh, Laura was so incredible. As you know, she was born in North Carolina, lived here her whole life. And even Ted Budd, who's doing an incredible job.